Hello, welcome to Daystar University Chapel online. My name is Moses Wisdom TVJ and I'm glad to have you here. I want to welcome you to our session that we are going to have today. We are live on Daystar University, live on YouTube. Please share the link to your friends and family on Daystar Christian Fellowship on both Instagram and Facebook. On Twitter, it is Daystar underscore DCF. Means we are glad to have you. Let's get this party started. We are just celebrating Jesus for who he is in our lives. Celebrating for who he is in your life. Hallelujah. Atakama uko na mse valentine. Hallelujah. Jesus is the love of your life. Tell your neighbor Jesus is the love of your life. Tulikuwa wengi bana. We were so many. We were so many. And Jesus, to accept that Jesus is the love of our lives. Hallelujah. Your time has been me, but I love you forever. I love you forever. Because Jesus is the love of our hearts. Hallelujah. We're going to celebrate this morning. We're going to celebrate Jesus. We're going to praise him and give him all the glory. Because he is worthy and he deserves all the praise and all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. your hands together. Hey. Come on, if you're celebrating Jesus this morning, put your hands together like this. Let's go. Hey, 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 hey. hey hallelujah. Jesus! Shangwe, 
kwa shangwe twa kusi e milele hakuna kama wewe e kwa shangwe wewe ndio tuna sifu hakuna kama wewe Haleluya. Haleluya. Na na tumeongezeka. Can you just turn to your neighbor and ask them, are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Are you happy to be in chapel today? Ask them, are you happy to be in chapel today? Haleluya. Ask them, are you happy to be in chapel today? What what was their response? Mama sema yes. Come on, Mama sema yes, then they have a reason. We have a reason to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to give God all the glory and all the honor cuz he is worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to we're going to sing a very simple song and we're just going to respond. Hallelujah. Amen. When I say I give you glory, say yeah. I give you glory. Yeah. I give you praise. Yeah. Cuz the enemy Because the enemy did not triumph. Come on, if you know you are a conqueror today, come on, just raise your hand. If you know that you are a victor, Amen. that by the virtue of Jesus dying on the cross, Amen. that He made you a conqueror, then you are, then you 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 are the person who should be giving God the glory and all the honor this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. I give you glory. Yeah. I give you praise. Because yeah. the enemy did, did not triumph. Hallelujah. The enemy has never triumphed before. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil should never lie to you that he has triumphed over your life because Jesus has a control over your life. Jesus owns you. Hallelujah. Amen. Satan has no hold on you. He has no hold on you whatsoever. Hallelujah. Amen. And he will never triumph. He has never triumphed and he will never triumph over your life. Hallelujah. Amen. I give you glory. Yeah. I give you praise. Yeah. Cuz the enemy did, did not try. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's see one more time. I give you glory. Yeah. I give you praise. Yeah. Cuz the enemy did, did not try. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a shout in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Um There is no better place to be than to be in the presence of the Lord. Than to be in the place where God is. Hallelujah. Than to be where his spirit is. So this morning we're going to tell God that we want to be the place. We want to be the place where your glory dwells. We want to be the place where your glory dwells. Hallelujah. This morning the desire of my heart I'm telling Jesus that if you're looking for a place to stay then make my body make me your home hallelujah i am ready to host you i am ready to host you because there is nothing there is no other better place than to be in the presence of the lord jesus we worship you oh god oh god you yeah, did yeah. Take all our treasure all our possessions all the we've accomplished and use it for your glory use it for your glory Take all our talents all of our giftings take all our passions and use it for your glory use it for your glory this 
morning we tell Jesus silver and gold can compare to your love for us cause we want to be the place where your glory dwells and we want to be glory dwells and we want to be the people where your presence dwells we want to be the place we want to be the place where your glory dwells we want to be the we want to be the people where your presence dwells we want to be the place And we want to be the place where your glory dwells. And we want to be the people where your presence dwells. And we want to be the place where your glory dwells. We want to be the people where your presence dwells. And we want to be the place where your glory dwells. We want to be the people where your, where your presence dwells. We want to be the place where your, where your glory dwells. We want to be the people where your presence dwells. We want to be the place where your glory dwells. And we want to be the people where your presence dwells. It dwells. Where your presence is, is where we want to be. Where your presence is, is where we want to be. Where your glory is, is where we want to be, is where we want to be. Is where we want to be. Yeah, yeah. Where your presence is, oh God. There is no other better place to be, oh God, but in your presence. Oh, oh. Oh, upon him, walk on the fortune Oh, upon him, walk on the Oh, upon him, walk Come on, just open up your mouth and tell Jesus that where your presence is, that is where I want to be. Where your glory is, where your spirit is,
somebody go before the Lord this morning even as you make that declaration that you want to dwell in the presence of the Lord that you want to dwell where the glory of the Lord dwells because there there is peace there there is joy there there is provision where the Lord dwells come on somebody just go before the Lord open your mouth and give a shout to the Lord this morning as you worship him as you declare your desire to sit in the presence of the Almighty God to sit in where the Lord dwells because in his presence there is glory. In his presence there is good health. In his presence there is provision. There is prosperity. Oh Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you, dear Lord, because in your presence is where we desire to dwell. Because in your presence there is glory, oh God. We thank you this morning for this opportunity. Someone just open your mouth and say, Lord, I need to dwell in your presence even this morning. That even as we sit together in this chapel service, we will experience the divine move of the Lord. Even as we dwell in His presence. Even as He ministers unto our lives. Even as He sorts out our life issues. Because in His presence there is power. Power that is, that is beyond every human ability. In the presence of the Lord, there is forgiveness. In the presence of the Lord, there is acceptance. In the presence of the Lord, there is love. In the presence of the Lord, there is victory. Father, we thank you. We thank you because you are Emmanuel, God with us, even in our situations. We thank you because you are God who understands our struggles. You are God who knows even our motives before we utter our word, oh God. We thank you, dear Lord, because you are God who cares about us. And therefore, this morning, as you make this declaration... We want to pray that indeed we will experience your move and your power in your presence. Even as we sit together this morning in this worship chapel, oh God, we surrender our lives unto you. We surrender our struggles unto you, dear Lord, this morning. We confess our sins, our heavenly Father. We seek your forgiveness this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, may you forgive us. We know that it is only sin that it can keep us away from your presence because you are a holy God and in you there is no sin. You are a righteous God. You are a just God. And so our Father, even as we desire to sit in your presence and to dwell in your presence, we want to pray that you may forgive us of our sin. 
We thank you, dear Lord, because of the promise in your word that your ear is not deaf, that it do not hear us, O oh God, and that your hand is not too short, that it do not save us. And so this morning, our Father, we surrender our hearts before you. We surrender our cares, O oh God. We commit every part of our being unto your hands, O oh God. May we experience your presence in this service. We desire to dwell in your presence. Because in your presence, there is all what we need. We thank you, dear Lord, for this day. Let's spend the next couple of minutes in this service, oh God. We pray that our Father, you will minister unto each one of us in a very personal and a specific way. That as we leave this service, our God and our Father, we will truly walk out confessing that indeed, God, you have ministered unto our lives. And so we open our hearts and we let our lives bear before you. Have your way, oh Lord. And may you be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shout amen like you mean it. Amen. 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 And praise the Lord for this morning. Can you appreciate uh, the worship team for wonderfully leading Hallelujah. us in the presence of the Lord? Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, worship team, for that great leading. I take this opportunity to welcome all of us into the presence of the Lord this morning. The choice to be in this service is the best choice that you've made for your life this day that the Lord has given us. Just a quick reminder that some of us have forgotten to put on our masks, so kindly I'm reminding that as we sit in the chapel service, let's remember to put on our masks. We, we are not yet out of the woods. So please, uh, if your neighbor has forgotten, kindly remind them to put on their masks so that we protect one another even as we sit together in this worship service. Allow me to invite us into today's announcements and thereafter I'll be leading us next. Welcome to chapel. The theme of the semester is standing firm in the faith from first Corinthians. Welcome to chapel. The theme of the semester is standing firm in the faith from first Corinthians chapter 16 verse 13. Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. Here are today's announcements. Morning devotions continue every day from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. at the amphitheater and on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. at the Rocks. International Students Association of Desta University will be having an annual general meeting on Wednesday, the 17th of February at the ICT Theater from 6 p.m. All international students are invited. We welcome you to Midweek Fellowship this and every Wednesday at Theater One from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Come, let's fellowship together. If you have any announcements that you'd like to be made during chapel, kindly email it with all necessary documents to dcfrthi at daysta.ac.ke. The deadline for submission is Friday, 5 p.m. That is all I have for you. Till next week, God bless you. Good morning let's and let's welcome to chapel. The theme of the semester is... And let's act accordingly. Um, right about now, I want to bring to us our speaker for today's chapel. This is none other than our very own vice chancellor that is coming to share God's word with us. So please encourage our vice chancellor as he comes up to share with us uh, this morning God's word as, as the Lord has prepared him. Yes, uh, I'm told the DVC who come first. So welcome uh, Dr. Muturi, our DVC fab. I'm Jambo. Praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and tell him all, huh? today is a great day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, why is today a great day? Why is today a great day? Because today we'll be on our fourth phase of what we call beautification. Uh, we are inviting you to join us, join, join our VC after chapel, 
to plant trees. And we are, we are estimating that we are going to plant 1,500 trees, 1,500 trees in this fourth phase of beautification. So we're asking you to do at least uh, five trees today. Try to do as many as you can, but you can do five trees. Then after the planting of trees, we'll have refreshments for all of you near Grace, Grace Hostel. This is an effort that uh, our PC has been on since he came. We started with the first phase here, went to the second phase, the third phase. Now we are in the fourth phase. And uh, we don't want just to beautify our, our compound, but also to join the global community in the con conservation of our environment. And you know that that is big. Yesterday, Bill Gates said that uh, reversing climate change is actually more difficult than dealing with COVID-19. So we want to join the global community in this effort of conserving the environment. Uh, but I want to say a few things uh, apart from the planting of trees. Just in our efforts to make our stay in Desta University, particularly in Adriva campus, more comfortable, We've been working on our canteen. I don't know whether you have seen the works we have been doing on our canteen. Uh, our canteen uh, in 2019 was in a very bad state, those who remember. And we have spent a lot of money uh, working on the canteen. The main cafeteria, I'm talking about the main cafeteria, where most of our students take their meals. So uh, we spent a lot of money to work on on that uh, cafeteria, I remember the first contract was about six, six million. That just to work on the cafeteria. Then we have bought uh, equipment worth about three million. Actually, today there is a team in that cafeteria who will be doing what you call automation. C can you clap for, for this before I say <laughs> what it means? Uh, our effort is to automate the canteen so that uh, when you go there, you don't have to sign something or do something, but you will use your biometric, you choose your food, uh, what, whatever food you want on a screen, and that will be happening today. So uh, I will urge all of us to make sure that our biometric, biometrics are taken starting today so that we can automate the canteen. We took over the canteen from the outsource services so that we can provide better services, better food, and uh, we are urging all of us to make sure that you use our canteen. And this, this includes our, our, our staff, members of staff. Uh, you are welcome to our canteen. You, that's where you'll get your best meal. Also including our students who reside outside the campus. Uh, get food from our can, uh, cafeteria, and then probably you just go to, to sleep in your, in your hostels outside the campus. Uh, of course, work there is not complete. We want to buy new furniture, and we, we keep praying that God can provide for the resources needed to, to buy new furniture. We want a modern Canteen. We want to rival set called Java in our compound. More announcements. On 4th of March, that's, that's Tuesday next week, but one, if I'm not wrong, two weeks from now, we'll be launching the gym. Have you seen the new gym? Can you clap for our VC? The, the VC. <laughs> the VC was able to, to get somebody to, to provide to us 
the jeep equipment. And I want you to visit there and see what is there actually. O of course, you wait for us to finish some work we are doing, and then you see how beautiful that gym is. We are praying, uh, we are praying to get more resources to do the other gym. You know the old gym? The old gym, because now when you compare the two, it's like uh, one is uh, in uh, first world, the other one is in third world. So we want to do the other gym, and we are praying for resources so that we can do the other gym so that it looks like the, the, the one we have just done. And we'll be dedicating that gym on 4th of March. And then on 4th of March, we'll also be launching the DESTA strategic plan. And on the same day, we'll be uh, is it unveiling the, the DESTA anthem. The DESTA anthem. So that we can all be singing uh, an anthem when we meet alongside our national anthem. So uh, we are inviting you to join us on that day as we launch those, those uh, I mean, as we do those activities. Now, with, uh, I can say more, but uh, what we are trying to do is to make sure that life here is as comfortable as it can be. And we pray that you, you join us in praying for resources. Now, as our VC comes in, I want you to sing, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. We will rejoice and be glad in this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Our chaplain, uh, Reverend Msili, standing in for Reverend Stephen Duto, who is uh, uh, recovering, and we continue to pray for him. Um, members of faculty, including the deputy vice chancellors, um, the staff, and the students of Daystar. It is re really a privilege for me to stand on this altar and uh, share the word of God with you. We are aware that this semester, our theme is standing firm in the faith. That is 1 Corinthians 16, 13, which says, Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courage, courageous, and be strong. My sermon today will be what obedience looks like in the world, in quotes. What does obedience look like? And I'm talking about obedience to God. What does it look like in the world today? And any time my heart goes towards obedience, any time my heart goes towards faith, any time my heart goes towards courageousness, one person stands out, and that person is Daniel. And so my scripture readings, in fact, my scripture readings for the whole year, this year, up to May, uh, will be around the book of Daniel, a book that has kept me strong in very special ways. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning as a community of Daystar to listen to your word, Lord, and uh, to adhere to the message of the seminar, semester that says we must stand firm in the faith. And so, Lord, we are seeking a renewal of our faith in you this semester, 
And this academic year, we are also seeking for courage. And Lord, we are seeking to be strong. And so, Father, use me as your vessel in this message I'm delivering. And God, give me the strength and the spiritual disposition to touch the hearts of your people. For I pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, can a story about four men in the book of Daniel help us in our struggles as believers in what I'm calling a post-Christian culture? A post-Christian culture. Look at the world today. Look at how many churches are empty. Look at how many churches have been converted into discotheques in Europe and in America. And even in Kenya, look at the number of us who on Sunday trek to the churches. But we demonstrate the exact opposite throughout the week. Look at our leadership in this country. The Bible tells us to be men and women of humility so that God may exalt us in due time. But look at this post-Christian culture. Daniel's story might just provide the perfect model for faithfulness in God's call on our lives, no matter what the environment. And I'm emphasizing no matter what the environment. For my students, no matter what the environment. What is God's call on our lives? And so, in preparing for this sermon, one of my favorite hymns again came to mind that tells me that my faith has found a resting place. And so I want us to stand as a congregation and sing the hymn which will be directed. And my team, I need your support today. Yes. Where is the clip?
Jesus died and that he died for me. I met physician, he's the sin, the most he came to save. For me his precious blood he shed, seated. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. And so, as we talk about faith, obedience, and courage, we ordinary mortals can only anchor our faith in that resting place. And the book of Daniel opens with four young Jewish slaves, I mean exiles. Uh, back home they were called Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah. And they were just trying to fulfill Jeremiah's call to work for the shalom of the city. If you read Jeremiah 29, 7, which we're not going today. Like others who had been recruited to serve in King Nebuchadnezzar's court, they are about to embark on three years of training. The training is designed to erase their Hebrew identities and assimilate them into the culture of the Babylons. It's very important for you to walk with me with this story. These are four men who had just finished university, bright, smart, brilliant, and they are captured and taken into exile in Babylon. And when they go there, they are supposed to be assimilated into the Babylonian culture. Sounds very familiar. When you join Daystar, there are those who will want you assimilated into their culture. If you are a student, you'll be assimilated into their culture of pervasiveness. And if you are a member of staff, when you come to Daystar, you can easily be assimilated in a culture where anything goes. So the first step in this primitive brainwashing is to change their names. So you give them Babylonian names. So what happened to the names? They would now be known as Belshazzar, that is for Daniel, which means may he protect the king. Then there is Shadrach, which means inspiration. Then there is Meshach, which means like the god, and Abednego, means the servant. So their names are, are converted, are changed. And I want to pause here and uh, emphasize the significance of naming. Paul Rendit, as I was reading his works in the, in the book called Introduction to the Prophets, he says to rename someone is to claim far-reaching power over that person. And that's why those of you, are, you are all young, and even my staff who are young and you're getting married, naming is a sacred event. So when you get your baby, uh, don't name that baby without reference to your parents or your grandparents. Because naming is very significant. What you are named, you become. And uh, so these people are being renamed so that they can become assimilated and forget about the Hebrewness, if there is such a language. So
So as part of this indoctrination, the young Hebrews would be trained in the language and literature of Babylon and live in the king's palace, eating the rich food of the king's table. Daniel 1, 4 to 5. But Daniel resolved, or as the King James Version says, Daniel proposed or purposed in his heart. And that is my plea to all of us. You can purpose in your heart to be different. You can purpose in your heart to do things the way God would want them done. And so, he, de he decided not to defile himself by eating the food from the king's table. So, outwardly, Daniel may have looked Babylonian because he's, he was in the crowd, but inwardly, in his heart, he remained a Jew, a follower of the Most High God. I am asking all of us to purpose in our hearts to be like Daniel. So Daniel request for a different menu when he refused to eat the lavish food at the king's table and the wines that were provided is initially turned down by the king's chief, the chief of staff. But he perseveres. In fact, in the books I've just read, he went for about three, four, five days without eating and his team. And then gets an attendant, I think that's God's hand, to agree to a test. If you go to Daniel 1, 12 to 13, there is a test. Daniel 1, 12 to 13, there's a test. Where he says, you allow us to eat vegetables and then see us after 10 to 14 days. And after 10 days of only vegetables and water, Daniel and his friends look even better than those on the king's diet and are, allow are allowed to continue with that diet for the duration of their training of three years. I am saying something here. Those of us who purpose to remain true in their hearts, even now, the first years who have been here, I am sure you are at peace with your conscience. But those who chose to dine at the king's table are the new culture. Some of you are sitting here, but you have troubled conscience, a troubled conscience. There are certain things going through your mind, but this is not what I was. This is not what I expected to be. So, I am saying, let us allow God to work in us. Interestingly, the passage does not tell us, it does not tell us why Daniel and his friends did not want to eat the king's food. But me, I can speculate. I can speculate why Daniel and his threesome did not want to eat the king's food. It may have been because the food was unclean. The Jews are like Muslims, by the way. They are very particular about foods. So it was not kosher. Or that it had been sacrificed to idols. I'm hoping that by May my, I'm bringing out a book on leadership and I, I trace my stay with a Jew, Jewish family when I was very young and some of their habits so they could have said this food is dirty, just like uh, Muslims will ask who has slaughtered this chicken before I eat it. In either circumstances, to eat the food would have gone against Jewish law. Leviticus 11, 1 to 3, and Deuteronomy 14, 1 to 6, if you can pick that as I go on. What, is, what does the Jewish law say? Now, according to Joyce Baldwin, another authority in theology, in her commentary on the book of Daniel, another reason may stem from 
an ancient Near East practice which says that eating the king's table was to enter into a bond of fellowship with him, effectively acknowledging devotion to Nebuchadnezzar as Daniel's covenant God. So, it could have been that. But Tremper Longman suggests in his new book, The Fear of the Lord is Wisdom, that the reason Daniel and his friends didn't eat from the king's table was that Daniel was giving God room to work, and work he does. Yes. So those of us who resisted the culturalization into what I'm calling the quote, the new day star you came into, you are simply giving God room to work. And that's why you are sitting here with your conscience and your heart feeling free and at ease with itself. At the end of the three-year training, God greatly blesses these four men. And uh, we shall be following this story. Because then Daniel, you know, is pushed to the king's side and always interprets the dreams that the king had. So, so we are saying at the end of the, the three-year training, God greatly blesses these four men and they are found to be ten times wiser than not only the other talented trainees, but all the wise men in the kingdom. Daniel 1.20. So you see what God does when you are true to him. Even your simplest purpose becomes a reality. The faithful actions of Daniel and his friends were unusual for their day. The other young men had no problem eating from the king's table. So this was sacrificial. And that's why we always say, walk the narrow path. Sacrifice, just like Daniel did. And so, I want to move to obedience and trusting in God. Daniel was determined not to assimilate into the Babylonian culture when it was possible for him to actively resist. Uh, by the way, I'm not just talking to students. I'm even talking to ourselves. Uh, if, if I'm a day star as a, as a vice chancellor, the moment I start waking up at 10 o'clock and walking into that office, I'm being assimilated into the culture of anything goes. The moment you are assigned work, and you want people to supervise you, you have been assimilated into the Babylonian culture. The moment you are a lecturer in Daystar and students are waiting for you in the lecture hall or you have put them online and they cannot find you in class, you have been assimilated into the culture of the Babylonians. So Daniel was determined not to assimilate into the Babylonian culture. And Daniel displays three principles that apply to all of God's people who are struggling to be faithful in the midst of a godless culture. What am I talking about a godless culture? During those, this COVID period, if I asked you if you come from a home where there is DSTV or whatever other cable TV, how many movies on Netflix have you watched? Yeah. So you see how you will struggle with your faithfulness. Because now you're walking into the godless culture. How many of us are, are deep immersed almost drown, drowning in social media. What are you watching on that computer screen? 
Some of you have been addicted to pornography. You can't sleep before you turn on your, your phone and a smartphone. That is what I'm talking about, the godless culture. How many of us are in drugs? How many of us lie about others? How many of us poison the minds of others based on this horrible thing called ethnicity? That is a godless culture. How many of us are engaging in illicit sex or transactional sex where you are given something to give this? That is the godless culture. And so, Daniel gives us three principles. The first one. And by the way, what is this literature that is going on? Research that has just been published by Stanford and MIT about our capital city, Nairobi, that 56%, 56% of the families, one of the children is out of wedlock. 56%. And every Sunday we are trotting to church. And then fathers are being convinced that this one looks like my late grandfather. This girl walks like my aunt. If you check my aunt's feet, they look like hers. Just, just absorb this. 56% of families have a child who's been born out of wedlock. And the men are doing the same out there. And you know, I, I, I'm a and chaplain, forgive me, I, I, was, I debated whether I should bring this statistic because the, there's even further statistic, it goes into the churches. And they have done ethnographic studies about churches and the men of God who have children out there and the women of God and yet they pontificate. And some of them even have barometers to know who is more spiritual than the other. They look at you and they say, no, this one is not born again. This one, but you see they are pontificating and yet they walk in a godless culture. So Daniel says first, Daniel resolves, decides, purposes, makes up his mind to be holy and not to be absorbed into the idolatry of the Babylonian culture. You can purpose, you can decide, you can dissolve, resolve that I will not. Daniel, the second principle, the second attribute is Daniel does not carry out his resistance to this culture in an arrogant or obnoxious way, but exercises his opposition with genuine humility and grace. And as believers, I want you to think about it. How much arrogance you, call, you, you walk around with. Because you think you are more saved than that other person. Can you walk, can you, can you show that closeness to God with humility and grace so that you can change the world around you? Third, Daniel exhibits faith, trusting in the power and promises of God and expecting God to respond to his faithful obedience. This is our running theme this semester. Daniel exhibits faith, trusting in the power and promises of God and expecting God to respond to his faithfulness, to his faithful obedience. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he shares on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will 
Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the sky. But his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt or a fear, not a sigh or a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. I'm talking about obedience and trusting in God. This is called Christian activism, demonstrated through cultural resistance of sticking to the purpose of God is a model for us of how to seek what I want to call the shalom of the city as an exile without compromising our faith. So Daniel's example calls us to perseverance. I think Daniel, if he was here, would be saying, don't give up, continue to resist the temptations being obedient to what you know God has called you to do. His example also calls us to faithfulness, to stand firm through faithful obedience to God's divine word and what you know he is calling you to do. So, like Daniel, God's followers must serve in the, world, uh, in the wider world. We can't run away from it. The world is around us. But with limits on their participation in the customs of that world. It is often difficult to maintain religious convictions. And I know it, and we all know it as believers. But we must decide where our loyalties lie. And Daniel is the best model. When we get to Chapter 2, chapter 3 of Daniel, you see he's the best, best model for being loyal unto the faithfulness of God. And as John Golden Gate points out in Daniel and the 12 prophets for everyone, we are reassured, we are reassured that the Daniel who lives at court with the king, stands by the side of the king and serves the empire, is one who has taken his stand and kept himself pure. And we are challenged about our own willingness to accept an involvement in the world, but to recognize that there are points at which we have to draw a line. I, I think about Daniel and this song just comes. The old rugged cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old where the dear for a world of sinners are slain, so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling 
to the old ragged cross and exchange it someday for a cross. By the way, living in the world today, you have to cling to that cross. The temptations of corruption. When you live in a country like Kenya where you see the president and the deputy giving different arguments in a public arena and elections are next year, you have to cling to that old rugged cross. And that's why a group of us, bishops and uh, men of God and leaders of Christian institutions, we have come together and we are forming a forum and we are going to have conferences in this country so that we can stand in for God to save this country. Otherwise, where we are going, we are in real trouble. And yet, we are a nation of believers. So, as I finish, as Golden Gay observes, Daniel provides a biblical alternative to Christians withdrawing from society, which has been advocated by some of us. In fact, some of us, some of you. That's why this congregation of bishops, uh, professional believers, heads of Christian institutions like this one, we are coming together and saying, we shall not withdraw from society. We are going to give a position. What does God say about who leads Kenya? If the best choice for us as exiles, in quotes, is a hostile culture to resist the culture while serving people and God, like Daniel, then we need to strive to be faithfully obedient right where we are. Persevering even in the smallest things that God has called us to do will make room for him to work both in us and in those around us. So my big question is, whose banquet are you attending? Are you sitting at the king's banquet? Or are you going and working towards sitting at our Lord's banquet? So if you are a disciple of Nebuchadnezzar, you know the consequences. And Daniel and his three friends resisted. They obeyed God. They trusted God. And God was able to see them through. So let us stand. I'm pressing on the upward way. No heights are gain, every day, still praying us a moment bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me.
sense of togetherness as a community and stand true to our theme for this semester this year standing firm in the faith and Lord we have made reference to Daniel because of his faithfulness because of his perseverance and because of his courage. And that God may you convert us into Daniels for Daystar University. And even all the projects that we want to do. And we have no idea where resources will come from. But our faith in you, Lord, comforts us that in your own magnanimity, you will provide for those resources. And that Daysta will flourish. Just like now, we have never gone beyond 3,800 active students. But I speak, as I speak today, under these very difficult circumstances, we have active students registered for this semester, totaling 4,800 which means by May, we shall be jumping over 5,000. And by August, who knows? And so, Lord, lift us up and enable us to stand and remain standing like Daniel. And so, let us pray. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to Jesus, Jesus, how I 
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving the example of Daniel in the courts of Babylon. Thank you for your promise to stand by us as we face the challenges of life. Lord, we want to trust you more completely today and our aim is to please you and always stand true for you. Heavenly Father, I am just but a vessel. I am just but your servant. But the last three days, you have spoken to me and you have given me immense hope in Daystar and my heart is at peace with you, Lord, that something special is going to happen in this university. And Lord, I know it will not be by our ability. It will not be by our might, Lord. But it will be because you have told me that you are in our midst as we stand in for this university that is intended to expand your kingdom. And so, Lord, as we see what you intend to do for Daystar, we shall submit ourselves and the glory and the ululations will come back to you. And so, Lord, accept our commitment now to you and just lift us up and protect us like you did to Daniel and the other three that were in exile in Babylon. So I repeat, Lord, that you accept our commitment And that, Lord, you lift us up. And, Lord, give me the wisdom and the teremity to win the confidence and the support of the Deista community so that I may remain strong as your vessel. And, Lord, since this is our purpose, this morning we are already thanking you for what you have already done for us. We know it's already given. Even as we cry for the school of nursing. Even as we see the completion of the wall. And the completion of the gym. And the solarization of this compound. Lord, we know it's already done. And we are just thanking you. So, we plead with you that you accept our commitment. Now, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Chaplain, I apologize. I have overshot the time. Uh, but I think because God gives us the time, uh, uh, I'm sure he'll enable us to accomplish what has not been done this morning. I want to appeal to the whole university community uh, that we shall all go to phase four. That's behind the rock. And we shall partake of the activity of planting trees. It will be a very short exercises because, exercise because the trees are already positioned at the halls. So yours is just to drop the tree there and uh, do as many as possible as we try to beautify this God's kingdom. So I'll feel very strong when we are all there and our DVC finance has arranged for refreshments. Uh, so let us be there as part of building the kingdom of God. Uh, 
Uh, thank you and God bless you. VC has led us in the, the concluding benediction, so we rise up and head to the tree planting as we've been guided. Thank you so much for coming. May God bless you and keep you in the rest of the week. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of yet another beautiful chapel session this week. It is always a pleasure having you join us. Thank you very much. We would like to get some more information about you, some feedback, it could be a prayer item or any form of information you'd like to pass on to us. Fill the comment section at Daystar University Live and do not hesitate to reach us uh, on our socials. Instagram and Facebook at Daystar University uh, and Twitter it's Daystar underscore DCF. But for now, that is all from us here. Have a blessed week ahead of you. Yeah.